Next up, we have Javante Williams. The Broncos traded up to draft Devontae, or J- excuse me, the Broncos traded it's up Devontae to draft Devontae Adams, Javante <laughs> Williams, the obvious future running back one in that offense. Melvin Gordon is an unrestricted free agent next year. However, he is in the way this year. He is only 28 years old. Melvin Gordon, that is. Um, Javante is looking, I think, at an exceptional future as the Denver Broncos running back one Mm -hmm. Um, this year. However, he's got to work his way into that role. The first preseason game, he had five carries, 29 yards. He did have a touchdown called back where he broke two tackles to get into the end zone. Had a heck of a a stiff arm. Um, Called back on a penalty. Okay. Second preseason game, much less uh, electric, shall we say. Seven carries, 20 yards against the Seattle Seahawks. Not really a whole lot there. Um, But... If you're looking for somebody that could potentially ascend into that starter role over the second half of the season or take over in the event that Melvin Gordon gets injured, which if you've ever had Melvin Gordon on your fantasy team, you've dealt with a Melvin Gordon injury. How many uh, how many times do you think Melvin Gordon's played all 16 games in his career? Uh, This will be his uh, seventh season in the NFL. I would guess once. That is correct. Uh, games played uh, starting back at his rookie years, 14, 13, 16, 12, 12, and 15 last year. Yeah, he did only miss one week last year, so kudos to him for that. I did notice that. But still, the guy misses time. Um, and yeah, running back is a brutal position. I understand why they would. He's already missed time this preseason. He's out with a groin injury. Um, so Javante has had all the opportunity to get more snaps than he should or would otherwise be getting should Melvin Gordon be healthy. So I like that for him. Um, they're in a very conservative team with Vic Fangio being very defensively minded. Uh, he did compare Teddy Bridgewater to Tom Brady in terms of pocket presence, but no but refuses to call Teddy the quarterback, the starter there, which I think he will be week one, but we'll see. Um, But I think that that offense looks a lot better, especially with Cortland Sutton coming back. So you know what they say about teams with two quarterbacks, right? What's that? They have no quarterbacks. (laughs) Javante Williams is currently going as running back 27 off the board in the middle of the sixth round. He's going before the guys, the likes of Raheem Mostert, Melvin Gordon. He's currently being drafted in front of Melvin Gordon. Ronald Jones, James Robinson, and Damian Harris. That's that's interesting for me. Um, He's really, I think, being drafted on his upside. And on the fact fact that Melvin Gordon is not playing. If, Mel, if Melvin Gordon was playing right now, I think Melvin Gordon would probably be going two to three rounds higher. But it's Javante Williams, and it's the Javante Williams preseason show. Um, I just think if Melvin Gordon gets hurt, Javante Williams comes in, breaks some tackles, makes some stuff happen, gets to the end zone a couple times, there is a world where he secures the lead back position away from Melvin Gordon, who is 28. Yeah. Can't you kind of see this backfield being that Javante is the kind of the on the ground guy and he's not really a pass catcher. I mean, his college catches were eight, 17 and 25 his three years there. Um, and Melvin Gordon is a clear, clear established pass catcher. Um, his career catches, I uh, guess, 256 uh, career catches for over 2,000 yards. So he he's clearly a receipt. He's definitely more the more of a receiving threat in that offense. And so I wouldn't be surprised to see that be, hey, uh, Melvin's going to come in for a third round role and 
you know, once he gets hurt, then maybe that expands a little bit. So I, I do think he's being slightly drafted. Um, definitely on his upside. I think you and me would both probably agree that we'd rather have Trey Sermon uh, in round eight uh, than Javante Williams in round six. Um, just from a potential upside. But he's a name to keep your eye on because if he falls into round seven, then I think that there's, you know, you're getting some good value. And a lot of people are going to look and be like, who the hell is Javante Williams? And they'll take Melvin Gordon if they're not preparing because they know Melvin Gordon. They have no idea who Javante Williams is. Yes. Um, The only thing I will say is... (sighs) Melvin Gordon is 6'1", 220, 28 years old, has a ton of carries under his belt, like went to UW Madison, had a ton of carries under his belt. Like, it's true. Lots of mileage, not Frank Gore mileage, but uh, yeah, right. well, there's nobody. Nobody will ever <laughs> touch Frank Gore mileage. Um <laughs> I just I wouldn't be surprised if at some point if there's another injury if his legs go if we see that creep up on him and Javante is young fresh there they traded up to get him I really think that he could be a thing especially in the second half of the season which it's a longer season this season and I think that that will also matter so yeah and and to me this is kind of a coin flip between the two guys right because uh over the last five years uh melvin gordon has not had less than eight rushing touchdowns um so the 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 production's always been there from melvin so i don't know if it's just going to completely dry up and that would be the the factor that would hold javante back uh at least marginally is just that melvin gordon's there and they're paying him a lot of money and they're going to want to use him and if this is the last year that that he can perform for them, um, they might choose to run him in the ground and, and keep a rookie a little fresher that can learn the offense and then maybe next year explode. Um, but I, I do think that there is upside for sure there. Yeah, I think that's what we're witnessing for both Javante Williams and Trey Sermon is I would expect very solid 2021s with explosive 2022s because both guys have all of their competition as unrestricted free agents at the end of the year. So yeah, um, I am drafting the hell out of the both of them in every keeper league. I can, um, uh, for that reason. 